Good afternoon. Here. Where are we, Mark? Shoreline. No, we're not. Yeah, we're in Shoreline. This is Richmond Beach Saltwater Park. That would be the Puget Sound. Yes, behind us is Puget Sound again. Again. And we're at Richmond Beach Park. And it's now June, isn't it? We haven't got any sun yet to speak of. It's still June, and the Seattle is overcast as usual. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to do a short little discussion of uh, a presentation on uh, enumerative induction. How's that? Sounds good. So good to enumerate is to list something, isn't it? List a name them all. Yeah, list. list of things. Mm -hmm. So an enumerative induction, as you know from studying the text, uh, is a type of argument in which you list a number of cases and then you draw a conclusion based on the cases that goes beyond the observed or uh, the listed cases in some way to conclude something that is uh, asserted as probable or likely on the basis of the cases listed. So I'll give you a simple enumerative induction and we won't worry about whether the premises are true or not and then you can suggest ways that it could be strengthened and weakened. Okay. How's that? Sure. Okay, so premise one. We're making a car trip across the country and we're going to stop at McDonald's in each town and have a burger. Goal being to have a hamburger at each town of a certain size across the country. So we stop in town one and we have a hamburger and it's pretty good. Okay. Then we stop in town two and we have a hamburger and it's pretty good. Good. And then we stop in town three and we have a hamburger and it's pretty good. We've lost all sense of taste, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, I draw the induction to a close by concluding that the next hamburger we have in the next town at the next McDonald's will probably be good. Okay, there's your argument. So, based on my premises, my conclusion is pretty probable, isn't it? If, if the premises were true, the conclusion would be pretty probable. We've got a pretty good uh, pattern being set there. Apparently, we like the hamburgers at this place, and they're all pretty much the same. So, I'd probably, the next place we stop, if we eat a McDonald's, we'll like it. Okay, so we have an inductive argument. It's somewhat strong, depending on how many cases I listed. So what would you change about that argument that would make it weaker? Well, say we only, we're on a two-day trip, and we stopped at McDonald's had a hamburger both days, and we concluded on that basis that we would have a good hamburger at the next McDonald's on the third day. That'd be weaker, because you wouldn't have quite as good a pattern set up, only two days instead mm -hmm. of the, the more days. I like the way you put that. Wouldn't have quite as good a pattern set up. Yeah, it's a weaker argument. The pattern isn't as established. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, what would you add to the argument or change in the argument that would make the argument uh, stronger? I can think of a couple things. And you said we're going to probably like the hamburger in the next one. Uh -huh. I could either have more stops. Say uh -huh. we have a month-long trip and we've stopped had burgers every day for 30 days in a row, and we uh -huh. like them all. Well, we'll probably even have a bit more likelihood of liking the, uh -huh. the one tonight. Uh -huh. Another way of doing it of strengthening the argument is to saying that uh, the hamburger we're going to eat tonight will be at least okay. Because mm -hmm. if I've liked all if I've liked all the ones so far, it's going to be even more likely that the, the next one I eat will at least be okay. In other words, I'm weak. It, yeah, well, let's talk about this a minute. When, we, when, when the conclusion that we assert is stronger, the argument isn't as probable as when the conclusion is weaker. So let's illustrate this with an example. Suppose that I've stopped, we've stopped 20 times, and sometimes the hamburger is fantastic, and sometimes it's just so-so. And at the end, I conclude that the next hamburger we eat will probably be fantastic. That's a stronger conclusion mm -hmm. because it's more specific. And if I instead conclude that the next hamburger will be okay, it's a weaker conclusion because it's vaguer and more general. Mm -hmm. So the stronger conclusion, there's more ways in which it can be falsified or can come out false, and that makes the argument weaker. And it's kind of like the premises are 
arrows, if you will, and the conclusion is a target. If the Ooh. target's very specific and hard to hit, oh, it's going to be a harder, uh, harder conclusion to get to, which means less likely I'll get the bullseye. If the bullseye is really big, for instance, the hamburger is going to be at least okay. Well, it's really going to be really easy to hit that. Almost everybody serves a hamburger that's at least okay. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be very easy to get to the conclusion, uh, easier to hit the target, if you will. Uh, so it'll be a stronger argument. It may become such a strong argument it's almost pointless. If, it conclude, if I conclude that I will not die from eating the hamburger, well, it's not guaranteed I won't die, but it's highly, 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 highly likely I won't die from eating the next hamburger. Mm -hmm. But if I say the, make the conclusion really tough to hit, this will be the best hamburger I've ever had in my life, That'd be a tough target to hit. Very much stronger conclusion, as you put it. And the argument, therefore, is weaker. weaker that is to say, the premises provide less support for that particular conclusion coming yeah. true. Yeah. Very, I like your point that the more general conclusion is a bigger target. It's more general in that it encompasses more possibilities right. in some sense. In relation to the premises. In relation to the premises. Now, if we left the conclusion the same, I'll like the, I'll like the next hamburger. Mm -hmm. But as you change the premises a moment ago, if all the hamburgers we had were fabulous, then even though I haven't changed the conclusion, in relation to premises, the conclusion is going to be much easier to hit. If all these hamburgers I've had have been absolutely fabulous, mm -hmm. well, therefore, I'll probably at least like the next hamburger. And in a sense, that the conclusion is now in relation to premises become easier to, to hit. Because if you love those hamburgers, mm -hmm. the next one's probably going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So, inductive arguments again. Uh, only claim the conclusion is probably true, and it's a matter of degree, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so you were mentioning when we were discussing this earlier that an analogical arguments and enumerative induction arguments have a lot in common. And they do have a lot in common if you uh, have studied both and thought about it. There are philosophers who argue that all inductive arguments can be translated into a common argument form, or in other words, that in all inductive arguments reduced to some common underlying logic that they all have in common. In fact, uh, some philosophers have argued that all inductive arguments can be reduced to inference to the best explanation, which is a form of reasoning, a form of inductive reasoning we're going to talk about next. But when they say reduced to, they mean that all inductive arguments can be seen as a special case of inference to the best explanation, mm -hmm. where inference to the best explanation would be the over, overarching form, and this would be a specific instance of that form. So in our next video, let's talk about inference to the best explanation. Mm -hmm. And we aren't going to prove that all inductive reasoning reduces to inference to the best explanation, but you'll see that uh, all inductive reasoning has certain features, all inductive arguments have certain features in common that link them together. As you noted, that enumerative and analogical have features in common. They remind us of each other. But this is beyond the introductory logic class. So that's just food for thought. So thank you. Hope this is helpful as you read about induction.